Ever since the final season of Attack on Titan started airing, we've all been busy singing along the words rumbling, rumbling, it's coming, rumbling. But did you know that the rumbling itself was actually foreshadowed all the way back in season two? This probably won't come as a shock to fans of Isayama, but there's actually an insane amount of Easter eggs and foreshadowing in this anime. Let's get into it. Zeke's personal exhibit piece. Let's start off with this fun easter egg. In the scene where Zeke shows Azuma Bido the ODM gear, he calls it his personal exhibit piece, but doesn't mention where he got it from. Avid fans might have put this one together upon the first watch, but the ODM gear Zeke shows is actually the one he took from Mike before he died in Season 2. Tom Saver's Early Appearances We first properly learn about Tom Saver in Season 4, Episode 15, when he is shown playing baseball with Zeke. But did you know that the actual first time we saw him on our screens was when little Grisha bumped into him when he was playing with his sister? He was shown another time, crouching down next to Zeke, when he turned Grisha and Dinah over to the police. Aaron's Titan Abilities Okay, now this one is actually so genius, we can't believe we missed it the first time. In episode 3 of season 1, we see Aaron miserably fail his ODM gear test and injure his head. Later on, when he's bandaged and sitting in the cafeteria, you can see his head giving off some mysterious steam. The steam, as it turns out, is actually his Titan abilities healing him, and a brilliant case of foreshadowing because we see him in his Titan form just four episodes later. Birdholt's almost big reveal. Ever wonder what it would have been like if the Marley Warriors reveal was given earlier? Well, back when Historia, Connie, Rainer, and Berthold were stuck in that tower that was about to come crashing down, we almost got it. In this scene, you can see Berthold with his hand near his mouth looking ready to bite down and transform. He almost transformed to save them, but luckily, Ymir did that for him instead. Not gonna lie, we were a little bothered by this. Imagine if Berthold really did transform. That would have been insane! BRB. We're gonna go ask Isayama to write us a bonus chapter about this. Aaron's Dream Okay, now this one is a speculation, but it's very convincing, and had our jaws on the floor. We all remember Aaron's Dream in the very first episode of the anime, right? Well, turns out in one very brief screen cap, you can see a children's bedroom. A bedroom, which many suspect, is actually Laura Tiber, who Aaron ate to possess the Warhammer Titan. It's a bit of a reach, but it wouldn't be too surprising because Eren had that dream which foreshadowed a lot of his future, before he even became a titan. So him having some of Laura's memories wouldn't be completely out of the question. The Coffee Grinder This next one is a proper easter egg, and somehow we overlooked it very easily. Hey, you can't go blame us because, well, it was a coffee grinder! Episode 29 shows us a group of scouts who spend the night in an old castle after it was revealed that there were titans within Wall Rose. When they are shown looking around the area, they see some utensils and a coffee grinder. This coffee grinder, as it turns out, was actually left by Zeke. Later on in episode 50, when Armin finds the place where Zeke, Rainer, and Berthold were staying, he finds their cups but doesn't know that what they were drinking was actually coffee. While he's seen examining the cups, the coffee grinder is shown. It's very clear that they wanted emphasis on this coffee grinder, because it was shown in one of the openings as well as had its own info card, kind of adding to the mystery of this apparatus. As it turns out, the coffee grinders were something that the Merlans brought with them. In a flashback scene where we see the warriors watch Marcel get eaten by Ymir, a coffee grinder can also be seen in the background. Ymir almost revealing humanity outside the walls. Who is the real enemy? In episode 34, when Eren asks who the enemy is, Ymir is about to answer his question and tell him that it is all of humanity and the entire world, but is cut off by Rainier. Later, in episode 58, we see Hanji say that their enemy is the world with a small flashback to Eren's conversation with Ymir. Rainer hinting at Titan Shifter's short lifespan. When Rainier comforts Berthold about his crush on Annie in episode 35, he says to Berthold that he should go for it and make his move with Annie, because they're both murderers with short lives ahead. And if we remember right, shorter lifespans for shifters was not something known at that point. Marley's foreshadowing. Okay, now this one is actually insane. An extremely keen-eyed person, user Ethan075, pointed out that in the very first episode of the anime, the title card actually shows us a lot. What is a lot, you might ask? 
Well, we're hoping you're sitting down for this one because apparently, in the title card, you can actually see the nation of Marley, ships crossing the ocean, the wall which Marley used to create titans and two titans running away from the wall. If you pause to look at that title card closely, you can actually make out quite a few details. Though it does not explicitly mention Marley or that the ships were crossing an ocean, not a river, it, when thought about, does give us hints that titans were indeed being created by an outsider party. The Paths The Paths has become an increasingly more talked about thing in the recent seasons and final chapters. The first time we see it extensively is when Eren's head connects with Zeke's hand and both are taken to the Paths. But did you know that the first time we actually saw the Paths were when Ymir's backstory was shown? After she ate Marcel, she woke up on the Paths, but back then we didn't know what it was. Now that we look back at it with the information we have now, it's very probable that after she ate Marcel and ended up at the Paths, she was in need of a new body, which we suspect was molded by Ymir Fritz herself. We saw her do this to Zeke too, so it wouldn't be a stretch. We've talked all about different Easter eggs and foreshadowing within the anime itself, so now let's end by looking at some within the openings. Opening 2. Focus on Annie. The second opening for Attack on Titan has a scene where it shows close-ups of the cadets. At first glance, it doesn't seem like anything to look too long at, but when you actually look at it with attention, Annie is the last person shown in this sequence, and her face is slightly zoomed in. Initially, no one would think too much about it, but seeing as the second half of the first season focused on the female Titan, this was no doubt a massive hint and easter egg. Hanji's injury. Another cool hint in case of foreshadowing was Hanji's glasses breaking in the second opening, which hints on her losing an eye a whole season later. Opening 3. Eren's Blue Eyes The third opening for Attack on Titan features a brief moment in which we see his usually green eyes in a shade of blue. Now, we're not fully sure what this hints at specifically, but we suspect it's to show he is the founding titan. Either that, or it's the path showing in his eyes. Opening 5. Almost Dead Armin. They were very sneaky about this one, but also very lucky not many, including us, really caught onto it at the time. In the final opening for Season 3, we see a brief scene of Armin waking up with a gasp. And while it may not seem like much to your average watcher, this scene kind of spoils him almost dying after burning up from Titan Steam. If you pause fast enough, you can see his severely burnt self a split second before he wakes up, showing us what happens towards the end of the season. Final opening. Aaron and the Birds. Spoiler warning, this will contain a major manga spoiler for the end of Attack on Titan, so watch at your own risk. The final opening, and some of the earlier ones too, shows birds flying by and near Aaron. If you have completed the manga, you know this could very likely be versions of Aaron, because you know, he reincarnates into a bird to check up on Mikasa after he dies. Many have theorized that on multiple occasions when we have seen a bird in an opening or anime itself, it is actually Aaron from the future visiting past memories. Aaron Stark, the three-eyed raven, eh? Seeing how the founding titan has the capabilities to transcend space and time, it would not be too unlikely. Perhaps this was also how he knew so much about places like Fort Slava, among others. Okay guys, that concludes our video. Click one of the four videos on the screen right now. See you in the next one. Till then, take care.